All right, guys, here we go. WAVX. Uh, this is my call first thing off the morning. Um, let's see. Basically, if you look here, I had my alerts for um, off of my equity feed. 9.30 a.m. Broke 5, 10, 20, 40 day high. Um, keeps climbing kind of thing. Um, if you look, 516,000 shares off basically the first two minutes of trading, which is a lot. If you look at some of these other alerts at 13,000, 20, 90. Um, and I had, I believe, a 250 trade. Yeah, 250 trade, 500,000 um, alert. So for this to come up so immediately, I knew something was going on. Basically, what I did was, where are we, 9.30, right in here. Um, it kicked off at 9.30. I saw that. I kind of got ex a little overexcited and jumped the gun because I know a lot of times in the morning things turn around quickly. Um, but it jumped up. I think I got it. Uh, yeah, I definitely got it. 126 area is where I purchased it. Um, and then it kind of did its fight. It fell down. I got a little nervous here. It found a little base. It came up. I pretty much zeroed myself out here around 126 and I was like alright let's see what it does and it fell um, down to here now around 120 was my original 123 actually was my original sell off alright I gave myself a 3 cent trail uh, mental stop for the most part um, 123 it kinda was fighting pretty good here and then it cracked and it fell down um, at 120 I started entering the order to sell and I noticed at 118 there was huge support on the L2 um, so I kinda watched it and it basically kept bouncing up bouncing down bouncing up this trend line here isn't my original one but basically what I did was I ended up drawing a trend line I believe from here to down to here so what ended up happening was it you know this all was going on I saw the support of the L2 and I actually had a buddy of mine on Skype I was talking to about it and I said I'm not selling it until I see some of the wool get chewed up and these three or four little bounces here off of it off of it it still had a ton more support so I actually never got that worried uh, I kinda took my little investors live uh, DVD ABCD type pattern and you know I drew this in basically the trend line coming down with the base uh, I think it's called a pendant as well and as soon as it cracked at 119 to 120 I kinda was like I wish I could add to my position right now I didn't have any more settled funds I'm working with my IRA right now. I don't have a daily trading uh, account set up yet. So, unfortunately, whatever money I put in, I have to wait three days for it to settle after I sell. Um, and all my money was basically that I had left to play with today was in this account, which was only like three or four grand at the time. So, um, I was in 2,000 shares. I was down about 200 bucks here and it bounced through. I wanted to double my amount, which would have been nice, but I didn't. Anyway, it basically started uh, pushing. You know, the L2 was always strong. I, I actually wasn't really too worried at all. Um, right here, I actually ended up breaking even. I ended up at zero from where I bought it, uh, which was kind of rel a relief because when I was down 200 plus bucks here, I was kind of pissed off. So at zero, I kind of became happy. I said, let's see what it does, and it took off. So I saw it as 140. Um, it ended up having a huge wall there. And it fell down. It hit here. And I saw support. I kind of waited. As soon as the support broke, I sold in the 137 area. And I took 11 cents on 2,000 shares, which was $220 gain. Um, I never expected this type of volume just to appear out of nowhere. So this thing fell. I ran out of settled funds. I couldn't play it anymore. Um, and then this spike hit, which was ridiculous. Now, 
general rule of thumb that I would have played, and I didn't because I, I don't know why, I think I just got so excited that I got back to zero from minus 250 that I didn't really set any trail, but generally what I do is I enter a stock and I set a very tight stop. This thing was such a sloppy morning and the alert, I kind of just got in it and I didn't want to have any type of stop to get out right away. I kind of set a mental stop and I saw the L2 and played it. Um, when realistically I should have been a little patient this morning and waited till this form here happened. If this form here would have happened, I saw the 118 base for a while. I saw the L L2 showing it. It was blatantly obvious that there was a lot of support there. So generally what I would have did is tried to, I should have bought it around 119, 120 on a perfect trade um, and set a stop at 117. That would have been ideal. When I got up 10 cents, either take your profits, sometimes I look for 10 cents, um, or, you know, in this case it took off. So in this case I probably would have set a 10 cent trail. I like to do it, it's kind of big, I mean I could have lost all my gains if it turned around and ended up at zero. But a lot of times I just set a 10 cent trail as a guideline just in case and if I see it turn around and find support near 10 cents, sometimes I'll remove it and just kind of watch what's going on. But a 10 cent trail on this thing, you would have never got stopped out. Um, 163, 153. So you might have got stopped out in here. Um, so you would have got stopped out at 153 which would have been from one, you know, well if you set a 10 cent trail from above there, 128, so you would have went from 128 to 153 and you would have been in this early on a perfect trade, but anyway, um, what happened was I got to zero here, kind of got happy, it ran up and this happened, I ended up selling um, because it broke this support, it looked very weak and then boom this freaking sell, uh, buyer came in and missled it off. So at this point, it would have been a nice little ride. Uh, people probably would have gotten nervous a little bit here. But I watched this thing the whole day, and the L2 never really looked that weak. This was more consolidation. A little bit of downtrending, but it had, you know, a, a base right here. And it basically, you know, if you look at it, price level and your trend line, it pretty much did another type of pennant. So when it cracked that you would have you know you could have got back in or you should have waited for this thing to crack before selling and it never did so it took off kept going kept going bam 197 high smashed off it there was a huge seller up here um, reattempted to make it you know you had two opportunities to sell at the high it hit here again huge seller and it just from there on it basically um, lost all its momentum and ended a trend reversal as you can tell um, and that's pretty much it from the afternoon. I um, I drew this trend line originally here. I actually drew it just to here when it when it repeaked, but you can see it pretty much followed it almost almost all the way. It it broke it there, but um, there was plenty of dips. I kind of told my buddy I said I would love to be playing as five thousand five thousand shares. That's pretty much what I was trying to do. Um, up here, you're looking at 10 grand. I don't know what you guys are working with in, in as regards to your uh, account, but if you were able to play 5,000 shares, even 2,500 shares, you probably would have did all right dip buying this because this had so much strength. Even even after its failure, its first like three or four bounces, pretty much up until here, um, the L2 always blatantly showed the bottom and it always turned around. It, it was kind of like, I kept calling it, I was like, here's another dip for five or ten cents, five or ten cents. Like, a, you know, with 5,000 shares, five cents, $250 a dip, you would have been doing wonderful on this trade, even if you kind of screwed up the whole up run. Um, but it fell here, you saw the support big time here, um, 171, so here you had a little while to get out of it, but 180, that's nine cents. Even if you if you sold it here when you had 178, it was still, you know, you still had a five cent easily easily had five cents to grab here. Um, you know, on stocks price down here, 
I usually have, you know, I have a twenty thousand dollar account. Unfortunately, it's it's something with where the funds got to settle. If it was a, a margin account that I could keep going in and out of, on something like this, I would be taking right here when I saw the L2 and the support. I would have been in five thousand shares around one seventy one, one seventy two, and I would have had a stop loss at one sixty nine. Uh, once it, actually at 170 I would have had my stop loss so 5,000 shares if it went the other way it went a penny and triggered I would have lost 50 bucks but it it was so obvious that you, you couldn't have missed this if you were watching your L2 and you, and you know how to read it if you don't uh, there's plenty of videos out there uh, trade the ticker by Tim Grittani he has some good videos you could YouTube them um, but you would have saw this and you would have saw this resistance so the resistance actually was here. I would have been out, but you might have been able to squeeze a few pennies out. Um, and then again, it did a nice downfall, nice downfall, nice downfall, and bam, it hit another. I remember seeing this one and saying, "Get back in for five cents," to my buddy. Um, and it did 161 to 167. You kind of had a little fight here. So even if you got out of 166 and got in 162, it was still four cents. Uh, still another 200 bucks if you're playing with that 5,000 share. You know. Um, or a hundred bucks if you're playing with half of it. So fell down again, found support. Now this one you could have gone in at 157, 158, 159, and it kind of always was uptrending uh, until it hit here. There was a big wall. So and that's why I drew the trend reversal at that point. So 157, even if you got in by 160, you still had 11 cents here. So you could have made another 250 to 500 bucks, depending on how many shares you were playing on that dip. So you have 500 here, 250 here, 250 here. You know, it's another thousand dollars on the downswing just playing the bounces. Um, and then the plays got much less obvious. The the L2 in this win in these areas. I just remember saying that it was so. You know, it might have been 30 on one side and 28 on the other side, or 32 and tw like there was nothing obvious about playing anywhere in here. So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have risked it. I, I was in the room talking a little bit about it, like, oh, you might have another dip here, but the support was so weak that any kind of seller that came in would have would have destroyed it. You know, all of these other plays, they they were blatantly obvious as far as your support and your risk. So, um, you know, for all the new guys and stuff, you just it takes time. I, I've only been doing this a few months, but I've been doing it. You know, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, and just staring at L2 data since the day one. So I feel pretty comfortable reading it, and most of my calls have been pretty good. But um, anyway, you couldn't really play any of this. You ended up getting this solid bottom across here. Um, you know, you had this, which was a low, and then you had a higher low here. So you saw a trend reversal starting to go on here. Um, you could have basically taken this line you know this is perfect perfect world I didn't really follow this that much but if you were really drawing all your trends out you know you, I probably would have drew it to the bodies because the peaks I don't like using so you had all this resistance here it could have been a buy-in point so at 152 you could have bought in you saw the high or low it was starting to change uh, trends so at 152, 153, 154, you could have got in anyway here. Um, I remember in here it was a tight battle and it was really no way to tell where it was going. So I would have used this line as your support. So if you got in at 153, I would have had a stop at 151. Um, two cent loss would have been a hundred dollar loss if possible, but it ended up, uh, you know, cracking through. You also could have, you know. If you if you really follow, this is what I try to do all day. I try to follow and draw the current trends going on. So you know you could have drew this line here, and bam, it was fighting, fighting, fighting. So you, you left yourself you know a penny or two on the bottom. So 151, and you're waiting for it to crack the 156. If you got in here, you basically got a two cent upside and a two cent downside. It wasn't really that bad. Dance, 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 and then it cracked. And if you were in it, you're good. This thing ran all the way back up to 176. So you had another 20 cent run. Um, 23 cents if you got in, you know, when it actually broke your trend. So, uh, 
you know, at that point, you're good. I mean, even if you, you got caught in this little downfall, you still you still could have got out 166, so you still would have got out with at least 10, 12 cents, you know, another $500 run. Um, this bounce, again, later in the day, it was much less obvious. I don't think I would have played any of those. Um, I did draw a trend line like this just in case it came back up and as you can see it really never did um, This was just downtrending. I did not trust it. The L2 was just very again. It, there wasn't any obvious support It was minimal like the earlier supports. It would be like a five to one as far as bid to ask and These might have ended up being like a two to one, you know, like maybe it was like 30 to 15 or something and it just any kind of volume on a, on a sell side or any anything like that could have just made it collapse. So to me, there was the risk was way too high in any of these dips to even play. Um, I know a lot of people ended up shorting it somewhere in this window. I I can't short with my account. I wish I could because you could have made some money on all the shorts. But yep, that's pretty much it. This play kind of just faded and fizzled out uh, throughout the day. Never really made any more moves. Um, I did see this sell-off come here. I, I did call that in the room because it, it loaded up. And then it loaded up again right here. Um, I remember watching it to see if it would take off into close, and it didn't. So after hours, it's trickling around. I wouldn't play with this thing after hours at all. And I probably would say this thing might be dead. I would keep it on a on a, an alert for tomorrow just to watch. But, you know... It was up uh, 80% at this point. It had news this morning. Um, I don't know if you guys are listening to the uh, Cisco news, that bleeding heart or whatever they call it. But um, the way this the way this looked, I, it was a quick read once I bought into it. I just kind of researched what was going on, and they have something to do with internet security, and um, you know they do they just partnered up with Micron, so. You know everything going on with Cisco and security and internet. There's been kind of a lot of talk on the on the uh, on CNBC and all that type of stuff about it. So people could have just had their eye on it. Maybe this news, you know, I don't know if it was on CNBC at all about this company, but it definitely, uh, you know, it definitely woke up to something. That news definitely sparked it and it took off. So uh, this was my play for the day. Uh, there was one other play I got in for a minute on Tim's alert, and I think I made like thirty bucks on it, and it just didn't look as strong as uh, we hoped it, it was going to be, so I got out of it. Um, I think it was called Neon, N-E-O-N. But anyway, hopefully you guys made some money on this. Uh, I know in the chat room it was the, the hype of the day. I didn't really put many posts up on um, Twitter, which I probably should have, but uh, if you made money on it, great. All right, good luck tomorrow.